Right. Uh, 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 thank goodness naman, medyo ano naman, uh, what's this now, na my kids are, uh, my children are all graduates now. So it's, it's less, it's less stress, less expensive, and kumbaga low maintenance. <laughs> Yeah. That's nice to hear. I I know we met today for a reason, right? Right, mm. um, and so, yeah. like for example, uh, really LGUs are struggling. Like, oh my gosh, we're trying to keep the coaches motivated and the athletes motivated. I think virtual events, like racing events, is the way to go. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah even this one, yeah, correct. Exactly. Uh, so, Enzo, who do you think can talk about? Okay, how do I really go about? Um, doing a virtual uh, competition. It's doing one right now. Yeah, I, I'm doing, this is my second virtual meet. I mean, I'm I basically feel that with myself. I, I don't like to just talk about events. I actually like to actually go out and do them. Like it's just like you just need to you know like just it it takes a little bit of planning connection. Sure, sure. And things, that's what I think. Yeah, I yeah, think you, that's what people want to know. Like, okay, my gosh, start, what's the first thing about? A, um, virtual event and then you can you kind of don't know what to expect from your first one because you know that you might it might be a major hit or it might be a flop so uh, you know i prepared for both i mean when i had the women's virtual event which is the first virtual event i've ever done and it's like you know like the first time i think anyone in the philippines has actually virtualized a sprint event um oh yeah so i sure. was expecting maybe six or seven or eight entries and i ended up getting 16 and I had and 13 of them finished. So it was that. But the other thing was um, when you have virtual events, you have to do things a little bit differently to how you'd organize a normal event. Um, you know, I had worked with the weekly relays from 2013 to 2015. So I had experience in organizing an event with like, you know, 2000 or so athletes in it. But when you organize a virtual event, you have to offer something different to when you organize a normal event. So say, for example, we had a sponsor who was, you know, who gave up participant singlets or, you know, if you need to like add some variety to the virtual events to get people to come to them. Um, obviously, you have to bombard social media to get people in to a certain extent. But then after that, like the, the, the first step is, I mean, getting people to your event. Then the next step is, you know, like delivering a, like a, quality event, not just quality for the athletes, but quality for the um, for the people who are actually watching it as well. The, so, um, for example, with our virtual 5,000 meter run, um, you know, we have prizes for the top three. We have singlets for the, you know, free singlets for the most improved male and female, but we also have a free singlet for whoever can guess the closest time from the um, audience. So it's just getting the audience involved as well in the uh, in the virtual Change. event. I get just I... gave you my number, Dina. Yeah, thank chat. you, thank you, thank you, please. Uh, just text me then. I'll text you also. You know, Bonkus number also later on. I don't know if I still have it. Titignan ko ah. Bago na eh. Meron siya bago eh. Bigi, oh, may bago siya. Eh. Kaya nga ano. Ay, ayoko naman ibigay dito ko mamaya baka baka ano nang baka maano eh. But you can PM, you can PM here. You can PM her sana sa Sige sa Facebook. Facebook ko, add friend, etc. Pero pero ako okay, okay lang ako niyan. Wala naman wala naman magagambala sa akin eh. <laughs> ah. oh. so, nice that's my number. You just text me. You text her, you text me or even P ang ano ko kasi sa my, I use my formal name din sa, no, sa Facebook, Manolo. Okay. Ah, hanapin kita. Oh, sige. So this is a pre-record, is, is this a recorded thing or it's a live yeah. thing? We're actually live. I just put us live about five minutes ago. I was going to say, but you guys were having such a good conversation that I kind of... It's a no problem. But you, I don't think you've said anything untoward. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, not yet. It's, being, uh, <laughs> it's so um, comfy. Yeah. I mean, Zion will be joining us in about 10 minutes because she's basically just coming straight from training to the uh, press conference. What, what university is she now in? Uh, she finished at 
she, she finished her degree at the UC at uh, UC Berkeley in Los Angeles, yes. and now she's doing a master's at the University of uh, Southern California, which is you know oh, one you of the see. powerhouse teams mm, in the United correct. States. Trojans. It's one of the top two. Uh, that in Louisiana State, the best two women's uh, track and field colleges in the country. Well, at least she's still, I know, she's still pursuing her Olympic dream and hopefully she makes it. He said, so that, that's why after 2017, she wasn't able to compete last year, correct? Am I, am I, am I right well, about that? Well, I think the issue is, I think I said um, this is that, you know, at the Sea Games, it's really out of season for her because she's correct. got U.S. college commitment. So in the Sea Games, that's where she... Um, you know she's not she's not really in shape at that time of the year because it's you know december mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. College, off season correct is, yeah it's off season for her so she she always um you know she primed a couple of years ago in um 2019 when you know she first went through lydia's uh national record mm. um at the beginning of 2000 and, uh tw the beginning middle of 2019 because mm. uh Lydia's national record was 23.35, which was set in um, 1987, like 11 years before Zion was born. So Zion at the West End CAA ran 23.24 and then 23.16. Um, you know, so she broke that record twice. She didn't hold it for that long because at the end of the year, Christina Knott came out and ran 23.07 and 23.01. So, you know, she held the Philippine... Um, 200 meter record for about six months before it mm. got before it got broken. She used to hold the Philippine 400 meter junior and senior record as well before that got broken by Kayla Richardson. Oh, okay. He was 15 years old um, when she um, ran that as well. Like the she was about 15 or 16 when she ran the Philippine junior and senior record in the um, 400. How old is she now? Uh, she's 22. 20? 22. Oh, it's still young. Yeah, she's um three years younger than Christina, right? I think. Mm. So hopefully they can make it both. Well, yeah, when when when, when 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 is the when the when does the indoor or outdoor season begin in the US? I think it's uh, about to start, correct? Yeah, in about a week, because Eric Cray will be competing on the twenty fourth at. Um, and 31st, Alabama. yes, correct. I, I, I got that. 24th and the 31st at, um, at Alabama. Mm. Um, there'll be indoors, so obviously he won't be running the 400 hurdles because, you know, there's no 400 hurdles indoors. So he's probably either running a 60 or a longer, you know, a 200 mm. or a 600 or something. So, so basically it's a build-up a build up and a build-up to the 400. Yeah. I also... Um, like to note that the Asian indoor games were postponed till 2022. That's what yes, I, it, it has it, been postponed. It has yeah, been so postponed. That's bounced from December of 2020 to April, uh, to March of 2021, to April of 2021 till 2022. So it's, mm. it's bounced three times due to COVID. Yeah, yeah. And that's something yeah, that yeah. I think you know, it, it like, would be it, it would be really frustrating uh all, all of us i know are, are pitching to to see the philippine to to see the tokyo olympic games continue however that, as, you, uh, as you can see uh because of the 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 spread of covid19 that is becoming a a 50 50 if not uh even less yeah, well, proposition. with regards to that you know members of the national track and field team have been asking me is the sea games going to push through and my answer to that was um for the events in the first half of 2021 like the asian indoors i think that a lot of 2020 the early half of 2021 will be a write-off but i said regarding the sea games being postponed or cancelled at the end of the year i said it's too early to say because you know, ah, yes, last that's the last quarter. By the time, yeah. by the time, even us will be, will be even I, here in the Philippines will be having vaccines by then. I think anything before June will probably be difficult, you know, to push through. With any like non-virtual meets before June are going to be very difficult to 
to orchestrate. But, you know, any competitions after, you know, like around August, July, like, so the Olympics is kind of on the um, cusp, you know, like, I don't think, you know, I think it's 50-50, but it's not like definitely, you know, the Olympics is not going to push through. Hmm. Um, I think that the Sea Games is too, I just told the athletes, they asked me, I said, it's too early to say, we can't say it's going to be cancelled at this point, because it's just, we don't know what will happen. It, it, it could improve. You know, look, we don't know. Correct, correct. It, it's uh, too, it's, it's all depends on how the, the rollout of the vaccine is. Because depends also on how efficient the vaccine can be spread in all countries. Although at the moment, as you said. By the mm. way, uh, Enzo, uh, Zion is in the waiting room. Oh, there she is. I've added yes. Zion now to our, to our discussion. All right. Um, good morning, Zion. Good morning. Good morning, Zion. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, I've just asked uh, if you can unmute. Yeah, thank you. Gotcha. And last time I saw her was in Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. So, yeah. Zion, I'll just introduce who I have here. Um, obviously, I'm not sure if you remember me, but I've met you and your grandmother. Um, couple of years back um, in McCarthy and your, and your uh, sister as well. I think at that time, like your sister went through a broken table or something. I can't, I, 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 can't recall. Um, I think there was a glass table or something that kind of got broken, yeah. but anyway, um, yeah, so I'll just introduce who we have today. So of course, I'm, my name is Andrew. I run Toy Athletics page, like I, was a former PSC consultant slash research assistant. Um, also joining us is my co-host, Ms. Geraldine Bernardo, um, who is former PSC executive director um, and the two, 2005 SEA Games gold medalist in Dragon Boat and one of our leaders in the Philippines in women's sports. And also joining us today is uh, Mr. Bong Dralvez uh, from the uh, Malaya and ABS CBN, who's a long-time friend of mine and uh, one of our um, veteran reporters in sports um, in the uh, in the Philippines, and uh, we are now we are on the air. So, um, yeah, I'll, I will just begin off um, as I prepared some questions, and we're mainly going to discuss. Um, your uh, Olympic Games and school and competitions and that sort of thing, um, mm -hmm. primarily. So, okay, so my first question is, because I, I had a talk with your Uncle Brett, and he, he advised that you're now with uh, the University of Southern, the USC, with the University of Southern California. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you, you're now doing a master's at that at that school? Yeah. Can we ask what your um, master's is? Like, what, what do yeah. you actually... Pursue? Yeah, so um, I'm in my second semester right now in the master's of uh, studies of law, the MSL program here at USC. Okay. Um, so my next question is in regards to the NCAA. Um, now that you're doing a master's, are you now eligible for any sponsorship or are you still tied to the NCAA? Um, does, can, can you actually go pro at the stage or do you still have to um, comply with the NCAA um, requirements at this point? Yeah, so um, yeah, I would I still have to comply with like all of those rules. So no sponsorships and things like that, just because I'm in a master's program, it doesn't matter. I'm academically, I'm a master's student, but athletically, I'm still a junior. So I'll have two years just under the NCAA. So yeah, no, no sponsorships or anything like that yet. Can't go pro, pro technically until um, I choose to or I'm done school. If um, you decided to go for a sponsor, would you um, prefer a local brand as your sponsor, or um, do you have any preference that you know, like? 
like do you mean like clothing like clothing brands or just well, like like just any sponsorship like clothing or what? yeah um i mean if everything goes perfect i would love to be you know sponsored by any type of cl uh major like retailer but i am a nike girl so i would definitely nike would definitely be my top choice in a perfect world but i'm definitely open to like obviously anything yep okay um next question is um can you give us a are you able to give us a brief um summary of what your daily or weekly routine is when it comes to balancing training and academics yeah yeah for sure um so i guess i'll give you kind of like a weekly with school so we just started school um this week and because i'm in a master's program all my classes are at night so um this semester i have practice i wake up at eight i get ready i eat i practice from 10 30 to 12 30 um at sc just like down the block so i walk over there and then after practice i have rehab so that will be from maybe like 12 30 to 2 i do like exercises stretch um ice bath if i need to norma tech and then i get food from like the cafeteria there walk back home, I eat, um, and then I kind of rest and go to class. And then sometimes in some of those days, we have weights twice a week. So I'll also have weights and then I'll just do rehab after. But yeah, I mean, track is kind of just like a big chunk and I'm just happy that I have all my classes at night. So at least I'll have nighttime classes. I don't have to worry about practice. So all my practices are in the morning and then classes at night. Okay, tying in to when uh we talk about um you know things like ice baths and massages um i'm just gonna ask some questions from the recovery point of view so um do you have like are you on a special diet for nutrition as, a, as an athlete do you um consult sometimes with a sports psychologist and um, obviously massages are a bit probably part of that recovery program along with ice baths right Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we do like a body composition test like every six weeks, kind of just to see if we're on the right track with like body fat percentage, skeletal muscle, muscles and fats like that. So usually right now, I definitely no junk food, obviously, and I try to stay away from red meats, so more chicken and fish. Um, yep. I do eat the, the food that they give us for lunch and breakfast. So it's easy for me, so at least I don't have to cook as much. Um, it has been hard this semester, or since I've been to USC, because they're a little bit more strict on the diet side. So they would ask me, and I would, obviously being a Filipino, uh, rice is in my day-to-day -day, uh, nutrition, so I'd always be eating rice, and they were like, yeah, yeah, you might need to stop that. And they were very surprised that I would eat it for breakfast. I would always have longanisa and rice and eggs, and then, chicken and rice later for lunch and then salmon and rice maybe and they're like yeah we need to we need to cut it so not having rice is a little bit tough so i'm trying to eat a little bit better but um it's kind of just like a lot of pastas and chicken and fish um but yeah they do try to keep track of of the body fat percentage so staying on top of that has kind of been different for me at least um but yeah tying into like the rehab and recovery uh, I just got my massage actually yesterday, so I try to keep uh, track on that, especially with the high intensity that we're doing with a lot of sprints. I try to get a massage at least once every two weeks, but I do rehab every day, exercises, correction exercises, um, every day for like two hours, almost as long as my practice, and normally take a nice bath, so definitely staying on top of that. I have, I've had injuries a lot in my past, so like I'm very adamant about getting my rehab done every day. So I didn't see you mention some um, Filipino dishes there. Um, can I ask you, um, I have prepared a list of questions here and I have really done with them. Um, what would be your favorite Filipino dish? Oh man, that is very tough. Um, it would just have to be my Lola's Sinigang or Brambabe slash Decino. Um, what else do I like? Adobo, like stuff like that. But Sinigang, my Lola Sinigang is the best and that's my favorite. What is that? Like, pork, fish or what, what, what is it? Uh, beef. 
beef, I think. Yeah. It, her beef. It's red meat. <laughs> I know. That's why it's tough for me right now. There's only special, <laughs> spe special occasions that come to help. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, just um, in relation to your family, um, I think a lot of people do not know this, but, you know, I had a conversation with, is it Edna or Editha, your grandmother? My Lola is Edna. Edna, yeah. Well, I had a conversation with Edna, and I, I don't think a lot of people know this, but you have, like, um, some pedigree of spr of sprints on your on your grandmother's side because your grandmother is the cousin of um, the Onofre brothers. So Rogelio Onofre went to the 1962 Asian Games and you know won a silver in the hundred. But he's better known as one of the the guys who went to the Asian Games. I think it was it may have been I think it was just in '62. Um, okay. You know, he won the gold medal in the Asian Games in the 4 by one So can I ask you what it means to you to have that, you know, having that legacy with that, you know, with those, uh, you know, with the relative of your, uh, of your grandmother there for you? Yeah, no, no, it means a lot. She did, I, she did tell me that a while back. Um, and she and my parents and my Lola would always say that I got the sprinting from from their side and not the Jamaican side. So uh, it definitely means a lot coming from that, you know, that line and definitely want to represent it well. But yeah, I mean, like being on like a Filipino family, they always, you know, would, would always tell me that it's not the, it's not the black side, it's not the Jamaican side that got you here. It was all the Filipinos, all the food, it was all the rice and all that stuff. So my mother would always be very adamant telling me it was always from her side. So want to represent it well. My final question is this. Um, so I understand that as well as track and field, you had excelled in some other sports um, prior to that. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, um, I played basketball my whole life, um, uh, even before track, honestly, throughout high school. And I was very, very competitive in it. I did see a future collegiately with basketball, but I did have... I felt like I had unfinished business with track and I do like um, the individuality that comes with track and field. So I, I kind of just went in that route, but still love basketball. And still, I mean, in another life, I wish I could have played a team sport like that, but I feel like I made the right decision with track though. Okay. Um, I've just got to ask one more thing, just to yeah, clarify yeah, things a little bit with our audience. And then I'll pass on to our um, other to our co-host and our reporter here, um, just to clarify things. So, the Olympic standard in the women's 200 meter dash is 2280. You run 2316 during the 2019 season. Um, mm -hmm. How confident are you feeling regarding your chances for that meet? And you know, how many meets would you have to? aim for that qualification time building up towards the june 29 deadline for the to for the qualification for the 2021 tokyo olympics yeah um i feel fairly confident um because of COVID. of obviously last year a lot of things shut down right before we kind of got things built up so i was definitely hoping you know my first at least my first outdoor meet to get the qualifying time but with my move to sc and everything that we're doing and being on one of the best, you know, track teams uh, in the nation with all the people that I'm running with. I'm definitely confident that I could hit that standard, hopefully fairly early on um, into my season. So my season starts February 6th. I believe I have an outdoor uh, meet at UNLV. So I'll have the whole NCAA season until June 29th um, to hit that qualifying standard. So I'm honestly fairly confident that I'll get it early on. I'm hoping definitely b before April um, and we have meets like every two weeks so definitely want to just get that out the way so I can breathe properly but fairly confident. At USC are you working with Carol or are you working with, with, with which coaches are you directly working with at the moment? Yeah I'm with uh, coach Carol she's the sprint coach uh, the first sprint I coach. So, so she's coaching you directly because she's the head coach as well right? 
Yeah, so she's a head coach, but she's also the short sprint coach. So she's uh, technically my event coach. And then there's also yeah. like Coach Watts, who does the 400, 400. group the long sprints. So he also helps out. There's a, there's quite a bit of coaches actually that watch. But this mainly is it Carol, but there's other coaches who help out here and there. Mainly it is Coach Carol, yeah. She is my event coach. Yeah, she's really good, right? Because I heard that she was like USA Track and Field Women's Coach of the Year or something at one point. Exactly. She's no, she a really well decorated coach. Yeah, no, she's definitely one of the greatest coaches in track and field history for sure. Um, that's why I feel like I'm in good hands. And with the yeah, team, you're probably in the best situation there at USC that you could possibly be in to actually hit that qualifying standard. Exactly. All it now comes down to is just having, you know, like being in a good race and having some, you know, good, you know, good weather, good conditions, good race, and then bang, qualified. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's why I was super excited and super happy that I was able to transfer to USC. I mean, my teammates are people that run 22-1 and 22-4 and 6. So I get to train with them every day and run with them and race them. So definitely the best situation for a short sprinter, female short sprinter. Okay, thanks very much for that. That's uh, my uh, set of questions. Um, I now pass on to either Geraldine or um, Mr. Bon Petralvius, who would like to go next. Ladies first. <laughs> thank, hey, thank you, thank you, Coach. Hi, Zion. I was able to catch the finals of the uh, four by one hundred relay. Congratulations! I was right there, like <laughs> in front of you guys. You striking a pose, okay. things like that. That's cool. So cool. So uh, I guess from from my point of view, I mean, uh, everybody who looks at the Phil Florence or the Phil Lines are kind of curious, like, how did you get here to where to where you are. I mean, being Phil Am, uh, how does it go? How do they get to know about you? Or yeah. were you the one who was proactive? So this is for other Phil Florence who might want to kind of get into that. Yeah, no, 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 for sure. Um, I think growing up, I mean, I ran for Team BC in Canada for the beginning, and then. It was hard for me because I was a dual sport athlete and I did want to compete in a lot of the big meets like worlds and stuff like that. But Team Canada had very like strict, strict rules. Um, and being in from like a very Filipino household, it just like made sense to me to represent the Philippines. I mean, I go, used to go there every summer with my Lola and everything. Um, I understood a little bit of the language. I'm still trying to learn. Um, but it made sense for me to go for Team Philippines and wanted to represent them just because I knew they didn't have much representation. So my mom and my uncle and my Lola together kind of were like, oh, do you want to do this? Do you want to set it up? And I was like, yeah, I would love to be part of like a national team to be able to go to like to these big meets such as Worlds and World Juniors and all these other Asian games and stuff like that. So my Lola contacted the people and she kind of set it up and I already had my citizenship. So it was kind of just like an easy route to get there. And then from there, I was able to do all of the, these amazing meets and travel all over the world. So very, very grateful for my, for my parents and my Lola and uncle that kind of like set it up for me. How long was that? I mean, before, from the time of the setup and of course, what were the requirements? Yeah, they... um, it wasn't because I already was, um a dual citizen at that time it wasn't that hard or that long of a process i couldn't really tell you the amount of months but um when track season started for me when i was in grade 10 it kind of just kind of just like happened i think the requirements were i needed to be a citizen um and i think that was like a big thing that they were really trying to get and because i already had it it was kind of just contacting them and sending them times and meets and stuff like that that I wanted to compete at but once I had my citizenship I don't think it was a long a long process. I see so uh, as you flew here what did you do then? So yeah so like when I was part of the team um, I think my first meet was in Thailand. I think there was a, a bunch of qualifying things that Team Philippines needed me to do to be able to technically be on the team and then compete at world so I did want to go to world juniors which was in Oregon that year and they wanted me to go to certain meets so my first meet was I think in Thailand was an invitational 
And I think I, I flew there, I went there, um, everything was kind of like taken care, uh, taken care for. And then there was just like a list of meets that I had to do. So every two years, I have to go to the Philippines. I had the Philippine Open that I went to, I believe two years ago, um, to be able to be, to satisfy the, st the standards, to be able to go to like the Asian games, East, Southeast Asian games and all those things. So I think there is like a set of requirements and meets for me to do. Um, and because I told them I was training obviously in the States at Cal and slash USC. So it kind of just like worked out that way. So uh, despite you growing up Filipino, so were there any things that kind of shocked you when you came over, like maybe work ethic or how Filipino athletes are? Yeah, um, I think when I first came, well, cause I've, I've obviously been to the Philippines many times when I came to the athletic and I saw a bunch of the athletes I went to like a very small, I think high school meet just to like watch. And I was like, oh my gosh, like some of these people don't have shoes. Like they're running, you know, barefoot and stuff. So it was very like humbling. I think I ran there and I ran like, I just like, just ran slow, but I was like, I just want to run just, just cause. And like, everyone was like, oh my gosh, you're so fast. I'm like, no, I just ran like 14 seconds. Like it's not fast, but just seeing them like, you know, not even have shoes and stuff. I'm like, wow, like I'm so privileged and like, <laughs> and like Canada in the States. And, but it made me happy because they were happy and they were like, and they were just down for the sport and very like glad to even be there. So it made me happy to be able to represent the Philippines and like, especially when the Southeast Asian games, that was like one of the best meets I've ever been to. Like I've, a lot of the meets don't really have that many people, but the fans were like insane it was filled to the brim and like everyone wanted pictures. It was like a surreal experience. So it definitely like was gratifying and kind of solidified my choice for Team Philippines. Seems like you have it quite easy, but uh, do you think you can speak for other Philams? Was the transition that uh, smooth for others? You think? Yeah, I mean, I, th I thought it was smooth, but um, I can't, I, I don't know if I could speak for every Phil M or Phil Can that would like transition. I think just because I grew up in such a Filipino household and I've been to the Philippines so many times that I was like, I kind of knew, I could understand them. I could, I, like, I knew the language and I knew like manners, mannerisms and like, and how things go. I know like some people might be like, oh, like they calling ma'am sir, like, what does that mean? I'm like, that's just how they greet me. Like, it might be a little bit of a change, but I think it's worth it when you when you actually take time to be in the Filipino culture, be in be, be in the Philippines, compete and seeing people. I mean, I think it's it's definitely worth it. It might be a little bit different, of course, from North American standards and views, but like it's the sport just brings everyone together, it's track and field, like or whatever sport you're in. People still love it and it doesn't matter like what culture you're in. And by the way, I can also invite other people here present to also chime in. Maybe Sir Bong wants to ask, but I do want to ask Zion whether, so what do you think people here in the country have misconceptions about, you know, the Phil Warren athletes? Or can you, you say that? Are, yeah, can you say I that? think there are like misconceptions about uh, you guys, the Phil Warrens. Like yeah. the type of support you might be getting vis-a-vis -vis your counterparts or. Yeah, no, I, th I, I could, I think there might be like some obviously slight differences because I feel like the Philippine, at least the Filipino, Philippine team, I mean, through all sports, I feel like we have a lot of um, foreign Filipinos from American Canada that kind of come in and represent. And I kind of saw it a little bit during the, um, Southeast Asian games with a lot of like comments and stuff I thought were funny, but I don't know. I can't, I can't say the treatment might be, is too different. I mean, I feel like for me, I'm so proud to be able to represent the Philippines and like, it is a little hurtful when I feel like, oh, they don't deserve it just because they're not born here. And I'm like, yeah, you might be right. But like, if you could like see how I live and like, like my household and everything, my Lola and my family, like, I feel like I'm just as Filipino as the next person that's actually born there. And I'm so proud to be able to like say that I'm Filipino. That's one of the first things I tell people. I'm like, I'm not black, I'm Filipino. Like, don't call me that. So I know that there's might be like some differences, although from North America, they get treated differently. But I think we all have like 
the same goal in mind is to further further the recognition of the Philippine athletics. And I think it actually helps to have foreign people represent and to say we're from Team Philippines. Like I know um, the twins, I mean, like so cool that like, they also went to USC. I'm like, yo, we we're, we're literally part of Team Philippines together. And I tell people that all the time when they ask me who I compete for. And I think it just gets like the word out there, honestly. But I can understand where people are coming from. Even from other like nations, I know like Team Malaysia, like other people were mad because we weren't like born there. But I'm like, you know, I swear, I promise you, I'm just as Filipino as the next person. Like I want, I represent it just as much as people that were actually born there. So I understand where people are coming from, but I would like to, at least I know a lot of the foreign people like kind of solidify and kind of like want to further the recognition of Team Philippines. We always want to say that like, we represent you well, we are just as proud as you as the next person to be able to represent. Nice, I love it. It, it, Sir Bong has been chatting away and it's like he's like an encyclopedia. Uh, take okay. the floor, Sir Bong. <laughs> it's it's been, all, it's okay. like a, all these little yeah. nuggets of <laughs> information. Um, since you, you mentioned it uh, and, and you're, that you're a relative of Rogelio Onofre, as, uh, as Andrew pointed out. Anyway. Uh, just for symmetry, Rogelio Onofre competed in the 1964 Tokyo Olympic Games. So, wow. for, for full symmetry, circle. and hopefully, so literally, full every, circle. Yeah, full circle. Hopefully, you do make it. At maraming salamat. Maraming <laughs> salamat. 19 diyan mo yung, di ba? I didn't I didn't it was crazy because I took um, Tagalog <laughs> my last year and I wanted oh. to learn so badly because I wanted oh. to learn I wanted to be able to speak when I went to the SEA Games and in interviews and stuff oh, and I yeah. tried so hard um, oh watch the teleseries <laughs> that's know, the way my mama always told me to watch TV shows and I'm trying to but I don't have those channels or what is it called? TFC or Tea. I wanted to watch, but I I wish SC, <laughs> I wish SC had a Tagalog or Filipino class because I would have I would have taken oh, it yeah. so fast. But I need to. I have my books ready, so I'm gonna try to. to hey, maybe uh, USC has a Filipino group somewhere. I know. I know, I've been, I know Harvard I, does. Yeah, yeah. Because at, at Berkeley, there's so many Filipinos. So like my whole class, I had like mm. my all these teachers like teaching me and everything. So it was great. It was a huge, uh, such a great community. So I wanted to find that at SC, but with COVID, it's hard to do like meet in person and stuff like that. True. Anyway, backtracking a little. What are your yeah. pers What are your personal best in the 100 and 200? My personal best in the 100 is 1141 and 22316. Which you uh, ran in where and when? 2316. 2316 was at uh, NCAA Western Regionals in Sacramento, California. Uh, and then also my PR in the 100 was from there too. Ah, okay. Uh, did, what, 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 was your, what were your finishes in that, in that event? Um, if you at recall. Nat at Nationals, I only made it for the 200 and I came... 16th, 16th, All right. 16th, I think, yeah. Not the final eight or the final 10th, whatever. Uh, so again, backtracking a little, how many competitions you, you're kicking off with what on February 6th, right? Uh, what is your, what's the name of the event that you're, the meet that you're um, going to, to compete in? On February 6th, uh, I think it's called the UNLV Invite. It's in Las Vegas. Yep. Um, and then I think two weeks later, I also go back to UNLV for the other invite. Mm, is, is that an indoor or outdoor competition? I don't have any more indoors, so it's outdoor. Ah, so, I don't, okay. I don't have so that's why, yeah, it's definitely better for So So how, so we're looking at how many uh, meets before the June cutoff? Oh, gosh. So that's my whole season. So I would, I want to say like, 12 meets I do have a, actually the schedule I think it's like 10 to 12 meets um mm. that I have. let me see if I could find it but yeah that's like my whole season that's why um I'm fairly confident that I'll have 
uh, a lot of time. I definitely have a lot of time to make mm. it. But like I said, I do want to try to do it um, as early as I can so I can like relax and breathe properly. But here yeah, I can see if I can, I'll try to put it into the, uh, the chat, my. Um, uh, again, you're Filipino American or Filipino Canadian? Just, just uh, for I'm, clarity. I'm Filipino Canadian. So I'm from Canadian. Vancouver, Canada. From where? Toronto, I'm Ontario? Vancouver, Vancouver. Vancouver, ah, okay. So anyway, basta Pilipina ka. That's all that matters. Exactly. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. So how, how are, how, yeah, la, one last question. How, how, how would the, how, so you, obviously you're not giving up. You're still pursuing, that would be the right word, your Olympic dream. How would that, how, how would that be to you to be one of the qualifiers for Team Philippines for the Olympics, how how would how is that important to you? It's probably one of the most important things and the most important goals that I've had in my life. Like, um, I wrote down like in like a journal when I was six years old that I was going to the Olympics, mm. uh, or the WNBA or something like that because I was very like heavily into basketball. But it's been like a childhood goal of mine, and. I really am so like I'm so excited to be able to be even close to that. I mean, at times I thought you know maybe it was a little far fetched goal, but with everything that's happened over the over the years, it seems like it's very much in sight. And I not only just want to run the qualifying time, I want to do well in the Olympics. Like I just don't want to be out the first round. Like my goal is to at least make it to the semifinals, run PR like as much as I can, but it's been a childhood lifetime goal of mine. So it's insight and I'm really hoping just to get it so I can, so I can breathe and say that I did it, but it'll mean the world to me, especially being able to represent the Philippines and put up that flag and let people know that, you know, it's possible, you know, the small country has mighty people and mm. be able to like the world stage like that. Mm. Uh, again, uh... Then we give way to our lady and gentleman, and even Sir Chav Javis. Uh, what's the name of your sprint coach again? Their full name, and then the the head coach of the USC track and field team. Yeah, I can. I'm gonna write it as I say it. But the USC head coach is Coach Carol Smith Gilbert. Um, we call her just Coach Carol. Uh, but yeah, she's one of the uh, only female. NCAA coaches I think there's only like four or five of them mm. she's my head coach and she's also my event coach mm. uh, she's a short sprints and she is one of the best coaches ever so I'm very grateful to be able to be under her and I get to practice with her every day she gets to yell at me every day so <laughs> it's, definitely, yeah. it's definitely a dream of mine I'm very grateful to be able to be under her are you are you still uh, training with the Richardson's um, unfortunately not. I don't think they are at USC anymore. I think they're at grad school um, okay. at another California university. So we, unfortunately, we never got to cross paths, at least train with each other, but mm. we are in California. So hopefully we can get some, some training in when it comes to relay time or anything like that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Marami salama. So Zion, how are, how are the events, uh, what are the protocols that are being followed for the meets considering the COVID? Yeah, uh, it's definitely very different. Um, I think there, I think for some meets there's no fans, which was heartbreaking news to my parents who come to travel to every meet. Um, but I believe it's no fans and we can't really come and watch. It's kind of like you go to warm up and you have to leave can't really watch anything um so yeah it's just like very it's very strict at least but I mean it is what it is just trying to get the season going so hopefully everyone follows the rules so we can at least have a full season so I guess it's possible also here right coach we can do something like that yeah coach Enzo. oh <laughs> I, I don't know if Enzo is uh hearing this so, anybody have questions? I do have questions, but Javes, may question ka? Hello? 
It's okay. Ah, oh, wala, wala. Ah, oh, wala. Oh, wala. Nag- nagkikinig yan. Pero, I'm intent listener. Zion, uh, I, I missed this. You're taking up master's in what course again? Just just for the record? Yeah, yeah. A master's in studies of law. Oh, you want to become a lawyer later on. Okay. Hopefully, Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. After my athletic career, trying to be an athlete as long as I can. So you, you took you, t- you your undergraduate studies was again what? Uh, in, just for the in, record. Yeah, uh, I went. I was in legal studies at Berkeley. I got my degree in legal studies. Yeah. Oh, wow. Imagine a sprinter lawyer. <laughs> You'll run after culprits then. Like, just, <laughs> just, just joking. Exactly. Just joking. They can't <laughs> <run away from laughs> anyway. Uh, so so you're concentrating on the 100 and 200 in all your meets or are there any other uh, or will there be a for, for example a middle, um, 400 meter somewhere there uh, um, i think for the most part because i'm a, i'll probably be a short sprinter so i think my, my meets will consist of either the one two or the four by one, four um, by one. maybe a four by four but definitely just focus on the one and the two hmm. Yeah, better. Uh, mm-hmm. Of course. Uh, uh, so I, I, um, so I've been around teammates and those who from all from all sports, and I think one of their concerns always is their life after sport. Mm-hmm. So it seems that you're you're pretty sad, but maybe sometimes in the Philippines, it's all about training and don't study because you need to concentrate. So uh, obviously you're proof that you can balance it, right? Yeah. And, um, and I, I guess I'm wondering, um, how long do you think you're still gonna keep at this? For now, it seems like you're still, you know, still gonna peak, but when do you think it's gonna be over? And how will you know that? Oh. That's a scary question. Yeah. Um, I just feel like I have hope, hopefully not any time soon. I'm hoping if I run, if I run what I want to run and maybe have the right sponsorships and everything, I could continue at least until maybe another Olympics. I feel like I have so much like left in me. Obviously, I'm still young right now, but I still have goals in mind and what I want to like achieve. It's not necessarily just making the Olympics, at least maybe right now that's the the current goal, but I do want to be able to run some crazy times and do a lot of other things. So I think once I'm satisfied with myself and like everything that I've done in the sport of track and field, and I know when it's my time, I don't want to go out bad. I don't want to be, you know, too old and slow and keep doing it and stuff like that. I just want to go out at the right time where I've kind of done everything I wanted to do. And from there, I'll continue to normal life. But yeah, I just want, I still have a lot of things left in the checklist that I will still want to do. So hopefully in the next five, six years, I'll be able to. You want to leave on your own terms. Exactly, exactly. I don't want to be, I, I want to be able to finish it all and be happy and then on to the next chapter in life and the next set of goals. So what does uh, Zion do dur- during her downtime? It's crazy because there's not much downtime since I've been here. Um, I really, like I said, with my, my schedule, it's kind of just like eat, sleep, practice, take a nap and then go to class and sleep. But um in my downtime, I just watch TV, honestly. I watch t- television shows and movies, and then I go to sleep. I take a lot of naps. We, mm. we used to have, at least, at least last semester, we had a lot of like 6 a.m., 5.45 um, weights and stuff like that in the morning. So I did a lot of that. And because we have a lot of like meetings and other stuff, there's not much free time. So when I do take naps and watch TV, honestly. Mm. That's why you look fre- pretty fresh. Uh, I've been. I tried to look at your resume with the California Bears, but it seems that it's been down for the past few days, or we can't either connect it yeah. with the website right now. Uh, so, 
anyway, this is also 2021 Vietnam Southeast Asian Games. Uh, are you looking forward to that as well in um, Hanoi? I honestly don't know if I if I can. can when is that meet? November. November oh, okay. uh, November 23 to December 2. Oh, okay, okay, 2021. Oh, um, honestly, I, I honestly, it kind of slipped my mind. I was just really focused on Tokyo, but... Olympics. Yeah, the Olympics. But if everything's cool with COVID and everything works out, it'll definitely be a meet that hopefully I will be in shape for and I can actually compete properly. But... In Vietnam, I mean, like that's a new place that I've never been to, so it's exciting. Hanoi, yeah, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's like they say it's like Baguio. If you've been to Baguio already, mm -hmm. it's high altitude. Oh, great! Uh, because she won the four by one, correct? Sil silver medal, and uh, have you have you had any uh, as uh, correspondence or communication with KK over? last year or even now or um do you not, keep tabs on each other not really i mean i keep tabs like in t in terms of like social media and i see you know that she's training hard and everything that she's doing but um i haven't really like talked to her like that i mean we do get together when i see her at you know at, at some of the meets, meets yeah. But, but yeah no haven't i've seen what she's been doing on social media and stuff like that that's as far as it, I, it mm -hmm. goes Hmm. I think she's also been going to, in Florida, there are also a lot of meets over there. So most probably will be competing there and you're over there. So hopefully. Yeah, you... yeah we honestly, we might cross paths. I think we have the Florida Relay. I've... You're a, I me, yeah, the Florida, Florida Relays, yes. Yeah, we're going to the Florida Relays. So maybe I'll see her then. Mm. All right. Maybe we'll be competing against each other then. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, again, uh, it's just what it is. Uh, being a Filipino-Canadian with, uh, as you said, Jamaican blood, do you t take extra precautions uh, in avoiding this virus, given the fact that it's, uh, when it comes to colored people, quote and quote, huh? colored people, it, it seems to be strike, uh, pre prevalent among them. Yeah, yeah, definitely been taking like very, very um, strong precautions, especially here in, L in Los Angeles is really bad. Uh, so we definitely have rules. I mean, we, we have to get tested twice a week or yeah, twice a week and not allowed to do anything, have to wear a mask everywhere. We practice with masks. So I think SC is doing a pretty good job of making sure that we stay in the right protocols and things like that. And I don't really go out. I mean, nothing's really even open to even do. So mm. definitely being safe, as safe as possible. When you say you wear masks during training, uh, that's not on the track, of course. Uh, after, I mean, before, before, you po before on, on the track itself, you take it off. But then after that, it's back? Uh, no, like uh, when I'm warming up, I have the mask on. Yes. Uh, so on the track, yeah, we have to wear the mask the whole entire time. I mean, if we're running a rep, we can take it down, but right after we have to put it back on. Mm. Does so, it give you any discomfort? Off and yeah, no, it, it definitely does. I mean, running with a mask on is never fun, but we have to do what we gotta do to try to correct, make correct, everybody correct. safe. Is there a special mask for it for athletes? No, um, they used to have like the garters, which is kind of like that neck thing that you put up, but we just wear like the regular disposable mask. And so, yeah, I, we wear that for warm up. We take it down. Once we're doing a wrap, you run the wrap, we put it back up. And if you're sweating and stuff like that, just take it off and then put a new one back on. But yeah, everyone just uses the disposable ones. Mm -hmm. All right. For the love of running, correct. <laughs> Well, I have a Miss Universe question. <laughs> well, what does it mean to be a woman athlete? <laughs> it's okay. That's nice. That's nice. I'll try my best to get a, a very good Miss Universe answer. Um, With the wave, don't forget. <laughs> I think being um, 
especially here at SC, we have, I'm surrounded with a bunch of great, great athletes, world record holders, honestly, and NCAA gold medalists and stuff like that. I'm able to see just like firsthand what being a woman in track and especially just in track and field is just to find the goals and just like, it's just amazing to see and that and to find the goals of like males, male, um, male centered sports. I mean, I think in track, everyone kind of just like looks at the male side and like, oh, it's Usain Bolt and this and that, but seeing like firsthand, just like great female athletes being coached by an amazing female coach, I'm able to see just like what we're able to do every, every day at practice. And honestly, I think it shows when we go to meets and people can watch us and see us and like defy the goals and defy stereotypes that come, especially with track and field, that we can run so fast. Like there are women that can run 10 seconds, just like any man. Like there's still so much left that we can do. So being in like a very centered female sport, at least at SC, the team is very like close knit and we can see, I can, I'm able to see all of these great athletes. I think it just shows me that like, there's so much left that we can do in the sport. So um, I'm sure a lot of girls are looking up to you. And in fact, when you were here, I'm sure you had all the attention. So what do you think is your responsibility to them? Yeah, um, I think that's one of the reasons why I loved, why the SEA Games in the Philippines is one of my, uh, the best meets that I've ever seen, was because of just like everyone that showed up. And it wasn't just, it was, kids it was people of all ages and they were just cheering I mean I know half of them probably didn't even know much about track and field but just knowing that they were there to support and there was a lot of kids and they were all like with their runners and stuff wanting me to sign stuff and they were asking me questions about track so it literally touched my heart that like there was so many people there that want that supported team Philippines and supported me and to see that they were very proud that we were able to wear the flag and run and they saw us on the big screen and stuff like that. So I definitely take it seriously when I step out in the uniform because I know that there are people watching and I know that a country like the Philippines who sometimes gets forgotten in the big stage, that there are still people out there that are worth watching and they're great athletes and we have barely scratched the surface of what we can do as a country. So. I definitely, as along with a lot of my um, fellow Filipino athletes, I know that we take it seriously because we want to put the Philippines on the map and we want to make sure that people know that we're just not a country to brush over when it comes to a lot of the big competitions. Yes, it really matters a lot that you're very visible to these girls. So thank you for that. Oh, of course. Again, again, backtracking a little, when was your first time to compete for Team Philippines, Zion? Um... I believe it was when I was in grade 10. I don't, I'm, I don't really, I know I went to that Thailand meet, but I think What actually, year? Could, do you recall what year? When I was in grade 10. 2014, I believe. Ah, okay. It might have been the spring of 2014. I think Thailand So was you've been with us for six years now for, for yeah. flag and country. Mm -hmm. Yes. A as a junior, junior athlete, you start basically started out as a junior athlete for us, for the Philippines, a junior mm -hmm. athlete. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you uh, do you have any uh, role uh, sprint uh, uh, icons you look up up to, or even the Philippines? Who are your favorite sprinters, etc.? Um, when it comes to sprinters, I think obviously. I look up to, you know, Shelly Ann Fraser Price, Team Jamaica, Allison Felix, Usain Bolt, one yeah, of the, the greats that come from track and field as a country, uh, as a sport. So definitely them. I kind of look at their mechanics a lot, uh, especially Shelly Ann, since I've been trying to transition to a better 100 meter runner. I'm looking at her a lot, just trying to study her. But definitely those people I'm trying to model my 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 game after for sure all right uh you said basketball was one of your early team sports you played point guard i i reckon 
yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a short, I'm a shorty. I'm five six, so definitely point oh. guard. Uh, but yeah, played out my whole life. I sh- uh, this is uh, off left field. If you ever get a, ch- because I'm a good friend of the national women's coach, and D- Dina knows him, knows him also. Uh, Pat Aquino, would you like to play for the na- women's national basketball team if ever you get a chance? Oh man. So Honestly, she'll, do, she'll do a Bo Jackson, you know, two sports. <laughs> correct, yes. correct, correct. It's, it's definitely not out of the question. It's definitely not out of the question, but with everything that I want to do in track and field, I don't know if I could take time off and focus no. on basketball. Uh, oh, I then, know no, you. You want to pursue have- a legal career, uh, but uh, we, we, we now have, believe it or not, we now have a pro league in the Philippines for women, the Women's National Basketball League. I think uh, even Miss Dina knows that already, and of course, as we uh, as we told you, Pat Aquino, the national women's basketball coach, is a good friend of ours. So, uh, should you ever want to return to your first team love, team sport love, <laughs> uh, we can make the proper arrangements. No commission, no commission. No, yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. all for, all all for flag and country. I'll definitely keep it in mind. I'll definitely keep it in mind. All right. Thanks. Well, well, I have a couple of questions more. Um, um, do you feel that being an athlete will give you a leg up in you know, your future life and uh, how so? Which is why, which is why we should probably be promoting sports because of one, two, and three. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I think a lot of employers kind of um, value value athletes in the sense that we are like fairly disciplined when it comes to uh, everything that we've been doing in our lives. I mean, we are like both students and athletes. We do everything that a regular student will do. And we also take part in a large chunk of our life is athletics. So I think employers kind of see that we are able to multitask in a sense, discipline when it comes to a lot of things. And so, um, especially when my athletic career finishes, I'm hoping that the future when it comes to looking for employers can kind of look at all the things that I've been able to do thanks to athletics and being able to go to school and academics that I've been able to accomplish that will make a bigger, bigger deal to them um, than the average. It's true because at the, at the end of the day, sport is still education somehow. Exactly, exactly. Um, if, if, you were, if you were given a chance to like, um, improve sports in the Philippines, what do you think are our uh, go-to, um, the, the go-to plans, the, the minimal impact that we can do, uh, or the minimal that we can do to create the greatest impact? What do you think they are? Yeah, uh, I've been able to run out a few meets, invitationals in the Philippines um, over the years and seeing a lot of like athletes um, athletes born in the Philippines and what they have said to me and like came up to me and talked to me about and I think it's just more I think outreach might be like the best just because I know that there I know that there are definitely a lot of um, kids out there that would love to partake in track and field I know basketball is a huge thing in the Philippines but definitely track and field could be runner-up if we get the right representation and it could just be one of those sports I mean maybe modeling it after basketball in the, in the Philippines I've been able to even go with so many meets and I can see that the communities love those games going to games like that and even just taking a little bit of that and bringing it to track and I think honestly I believe that the Philippines is doing a good job when it comes to the sea games at least like that meet was like the most packed meet I've ever been to and I've been to a lot of meets in the States, so I've seen it, but the crowd was like unreal. So even just taking just like a little bit of that and bringing it into just even weekly meets, like their weekly basketball games. Um, but yeah, just getting like outreach, getting the word out that, you know, there's 
ask, and then I get, I, and then even from there, like, you'll have like a lot of other kids that might even partake in the sport and be able to fall in love with the sport like I did. But I think just getting further representation and outreach and taking maybe a note from basketball because the Philippines does basketball so well with with everything that's going on there. It's such a big sport. So why can't track and field be the next one up? That's true. So hopefully you can come back to the country and uh, do more of those uh, visibility <laughs> maybe yeah. maybe go around have you been around the country though yes I have I have I've been still trying to go to a lot of the islands and stuff but I say like mainly in Makati and like the mainland and stuff like that but hopefully after you know school just because um the NCAA I'm obviously an NCAA athlete first yes. so that kind of takes precedent over a lot of the other things that I'm able to do when it comes to traveling especially in this time of COVID. So hopefully after that, I'll be able to, you know, go back and forth and maybe stay longer and be able to do a lot of more local meets. And just so I can be more of a face and people can see and watch. Your, 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 your Filipino heritage, your, your parent, uh, your Lola comes from what uh, province again? Uh, she's from Tarlac, Tarlac. Okay. That's, fun, but, that's sugar yeah. sugarland country hacienda yes. luisita yes yeah you see yeah. there all the time drive uh, there. okay so so more or less uh, uh you 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 first came to the country at what young age i think when i was like six months old uh wow. i was here with my lola for like a year or six 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 months to a year um yeah my mom just like said go with your lola i need to work so my mom was like my lola took me my lola and lola we stayed in in a hotel in makati for like six months or something like that mm -hmm. but yeah i was there when i was like really young and then i used to go there twice a year the whole summers every summer um but yeah i used to have an accent and everything when i was young I'm staying there for so long. So yeah, definitely when I was you know, just born, Philippines was always hmm. first places to go. Oh. You said you like adobo, sinigang. Uh, you, know how, you, you know how to cook them? I go to, I don't know if you guys are familiar <laughs> with, seafood, with Seafood City. Um, yeah, okay. So I go there all the time and try to get like, I don't really know how to cook it. It's not, I've, <laughs> I've tried it doesn't taste like my Lola's so I always get like the Ticino and like Longanisa like the easy packaged frozen stuff so I can just cook it and it's you know foolproof <laughs> eat it with rice and eggs like but when yeah. I try to get like, some of their the food that they make um yeah I go there like almost like every couple weeks so I can so, get my so, uh, so you're one of the people that says rice is life <laughs> 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 it was a really hard transition to stop eating it. I would always yeah. have the rice cooker out and just say, clean. they're like, yeah, you need to cut it. Or they just said, try brown rice. And I'm like, Filipino food does not go well with brown rice. I can't do it. So it's definitely been hard, but I try to have rice maybe once a week. Right. Cheat day. Exactly. That's my <laughs> cheat day for sure. <laughs> and so do you like the patties, all those condiments? Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, my roommates are actually very, um, they're not really familiar with uh, Filipino food. So exactly, and I'm like, it's fine. But, like, I try to make them try it. They're like, oh, I don't really like the fish sauce and stuff like that. But I'm like, you have to. You have to eat it with tomatoes. You have to eat it like this. <laughs> Correct. Uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make them try everything. But for, for other people, it might be different. But for me, it's just normal. <laughs> You're a culinary ambassador as well. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be. <laughs> oh. All right. I think Thank I've you. exhausted everything. Um, I'm good. Andrew and uh, Miss Dina, you might have other questions. No, I'm good. I'm just happy to meet Zion and I hope to talk with you again in the future. Yes, I hope so too. I hope so too. Maybe when I hit the qualifying mark soon, hopefully soon. <laughs> yeah. We'll pray for that and give them. 
and it's always an honor to see one of Filipino qualify and we're, we're we'll be plugging for you all the way thank you so much I really appreciate it coach Andrew okay yeah well Zan I'd like to thank you for taking our time out of your really busy schedule it must be a mission balancing um you know training for sprints and also balancing your career in law I know it myself because you know it was difficult to balance studies training for sprints and mm -hmm. kind of working at the same time so I had to sort of give up at that point <laughs> um yeah so yeah I'd just like to thank you for coming on to our um show um and I felt that you know you gave a very articulate um interview with us and um yeah really showed your filipino side today so we're, we're very happy uh that you came on board um we also i'd also like to add that you know any um filipino national athletes that would like to interview with us the door is wide open we're happy to hear from you and we'd really like you to have your say and um you know, like share your thoughts with us in regards to the situation and, you know, what your plans are moving forward um, for, for this year and the years to come. Um, thanks also uh, to Ms. Uh, Geraldine Bernardo and uh, Mr. Uh, Bong Petralvius for um, for taking your time out as well to join us. It's, you know, 7 a.m. in the Philippines. It was quite an early start for you guys. Um, here in Australia, it's, you know, it was only 10, 11 a.m. So I, I got to sleep in a bit. But, um, you know, everyone Our else. pleasure. Si Dina, kasi ano yan, eh, sports, sports, kumbaga, former athlete siya, eh, still one. Kaya kayang-kaya niya yan. Kaya ako naman, eh. you know, you're a friend, my friend. <laughs> Yeah, it's always. I know, I know. Uh, privilege. And I, I know, Bong, that with, you know, I really enjoy your write-ups and I know you'll make a very good uh, write-up from this. Um, yeah, okay. Of course, of course. I mean, I, I've already written enough on Zion on my, on my page. I've got like about, you know, like 8,000 word article, you know, archive article with that particular athlete. But I know that you'll know, leave it to you to write a good story on this one. I, Which I, reminds I, me, pala, I, I before like, we, before I, we I, end, I, uh, before we end, oh, uh, ito naman yung Chinese, eh, eh, si Ma'am Dina, ano din yan, eh, may, may chi I, I, I also have a little Chinese, ano eh, kung hei fat choy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Malapit na kasi. Yeah, your excuse <laughs> to eat a mooncake, uh, uh, a tikoy, tikoy. Oh, we're, kung baga, malapit na yung, ano eh, yung Chinese New Year, eh. So, That's true. Oh. Well, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> meron, oh, si Ma'am Dina, may, ano yan, may Chinese blood I yan. I do. I oh, do. Ako din, meron. Kaya nga, ang, yung, yung aking, ano, my middle name is Chan. Uh, not the, the Chan, the stomach, but the, really, C-H-A-N. <laughs> Just to keep things light. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you, Zivon. Really A privilege and pleasure um, meeting you again. Hopefully no. in Tokyo, yeah. Yes. Aspirations. Hopefully, Hopefully in yes. Tokyo as well. Well, does Zion have any last messages? How can people reach you if they want to follow you? Um, you can reach me on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, my Instagram is Zion Z I O N or Z I O N C N. Um, that's probably the best way. But Zion Crown Class on Facebook also. And I really appreciate it. And definitely want to hit this qualifying mark for you guys. All right, all right. Okay. Shall we have a screenshot? Okay. Do we have a uh, screenshot? I don't Andrew? Know how to do that. Can you do that? Can you do okay, that? Okay, okay. I will. Okay. Smile, okay. guys. Okay. One, two, three. Filipinas. Yeah. One, two, three. All right, thank you. Thank you, guys. Great. And, uh, Bye, Zion. Bye, guys. I am a boy. Bye. Um, see you. God bless. See you. I'll be off soon as well. I have a virtual event. I'll send yeah, you like, guys. Um, 
Yeah, for the second part of this, everyone doesn't have to stick around because yeah. um, I, I don't really have any guests for the second half. I'm just presenting my virtual events. Yes, okay. um, and I know that you know. Ah, there we go. <laughs> she's she. I know that yeah. She's on a hectic schedule. I know how tough it is. You know, handling being a you know training for yeah. sprints. I mean, it's a legal studies. May it appear, no? People, uh, people who don't know that much about sprints think you know it's only you know it only goes for you know 10 11 20 seconds or whatever it is like less you know like it only goes for seconds but the amount of work and dedication it takes to perfect those you know that that 20 or 10 seconds you know consumes an incredible amount of time especially mm. the fact that you need to when you train you might go there for you might train for an hour two hours and you go to the track the amount of time that you spend recovering between your runs is like is quite a lot so you basically you go and run you might rest 10 minutes and then you run again and then you run a couple of times you might end up having 30 or 40 minutes of rest you know broken down within the session because that's how intense it is and you know to be able to i can't imagine you know because i i did um international business and international relations when i was in college and i worked I had a social life and i and I was trying to train and I basically had to put my athletics on hold for two or three years because, you know, it was just too difficult. I can't imagine studying law. Yes. You no, know, and trying to balance being a live, you know, I wasn't, I was only like, you know, competing at nationals and, you know, smaller meets. I can't imagine competing at that level and having to balance law as well. It must be, you know, intense. No wonder, you know, she can't answer her Instagram or Facebook that much because she's just way too busy with you know with her with her routine mm. wow i do want to invite her for the for the virtual conference because she will be a great role model yeah right. i feel that you know like she's one of the best if not the best person you know best athlete i've interviewed so far because i just found she's very articulate and you know she basically presents herself as a very good ambassador for philippine sports she's very polite very yeah. i totally agree no airs um she's great mm. very sort of like down to earth as well not really like you know sort of very level-headed when it comes to you know the, those goals you know realistic you know mm. Totally realistic. Right. Uh, she 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 knows she knows where where she wants to go, she knows what she wants, and uh, and also as, as you said, very very grounded, very very grounded. So her privilege. So, Mister uh, Andrew, thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you for your listeners. Thank you for Mamdina for reconnecting again. Yes, and, nice to see you. Uh, and uh, no, uh, we'll see each other. Uh, once we get vaccinated, let's all go out. Once they let us Coffee on me. Okay, <laughs> uh, Anyway, uh, yeah. Looking Chato good. tayo. I'm sure oh. we can do something also for the women in sports. Uh, oh, events. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Correct, correct. Oh, thank you. All right. So, so Andrew, um, you were going to record this, right? I do want to see the virtual event thingy, but I have to prepare for class. Yeah, that's cool. You can just watch, class. catch the replays later. Thank you. Um, Thank you. As uh, that, that will, you know, I don't really have any guests for it. Like, because um, the, the other co-organizers are busy, um, you know, like just sorting out the entries at the moment for the event. So they, they've got like, you know, that they've got, they're chasing up Strava names from people who haven't submitted their Strava names. Because for the 5K, the Strava name is the most important because the co-organizer Stephen Tan, aka the Talking Chinoy, he like needs the Strava names because they're going to email me the videos and then I'm going to put them up on the page on Pomo Athletics page, so everybody will be updated with people's 5K runs and Stephen will be the Strava performances will be synchronized to Stephen's phone, so he'll be getting all the Strava times. That's why it's important that all that they all provide the Strava names because otherwise you know their times don't get like don't get recorded in the uh, database so the Strava is really important for long distance events for short sprints and short events I'm using video and video software to capture uh, performances absolutely no hand times of course um, yeah so anyway guys thanks very much thank for joining you. in I hope thank on, you so uh, 
probably has a story to write or something. Or oh yeah, another. I can hear the clicking. Right. <laughs> yeah. He's starting already. Take care. Bye-bye. Good morning again. Good morning. See, see you, Andrew. Goodbye. God bless. Good Thanks for joining us. No problem. All right. So, um, yeah, I hope everybody enjoyed that. I sure did. Um, that was a great interview with uh, uh, one of our Olympic hopefuls, Miss uh, Zian Corrales Nelson um, from the United States, with um, you know with uh, Bong Pedralvez and Dina uh, Go Bernardo streaming in and helping out from uh, their location in Northeast Manila. Myself from Australia, so we were represented by three countries, and. Um, while everybody's tuning in, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in at this time in the morning, which is, um, you know, it's an early morning start for everybody, seven o'clock. Because of the time difference, I got to sleep until, until 10 o'clock. Um, so I, I thank everybody for taking their time and staying up uh, and waking up early to watch this. I want to post a special shout out to everybody who uh, tuned in this morning. But uh, we, we're going to wrap up this next 20, 30 minutes or so with our highlights of our virtual run, uh, Women's in Sports 60 Metres, which was our successful event held back in uh, December. But anyway, I'll just start by thanking and acknowledging those who uh, liked and watched our video today. So in order of, uh, of appearance, Marika Maravilla, Eddie Rakamara, Jerry uh, or do, or do duty, the uh, um, uh, photographer of the athletic events, Mihai Milhai, Bernardino Clemente, uh, Rul Corios, um, who's a longtime athletic fan, Ronling Banaja, Jay Salis, Patrick Manalan, Angel Rabs Tan, Hudson Emerson, uh, Jerick Continuo, who's a register registration officer for our um, for our virtual 5,000 meter run with Chinoy Athletics and Talking Chinoy. Coach Alan A. Vega of Bicol. Um, Gomez and Z, uh, another long time um, athletic fan. Um, and he also would like to give a shout out and gr warm greetings to Zion. Edwin De La Rosa Del, Del Fernando. Javis Daryl Anastasio, Marion Guipitasio, Angelo Salinio, John Michael Marfil, Junex Rotersos, and FEU Head Women's Coach, Rosalind Hamero. Thank you all for um, liking and uh, following our, our page and uh, tuning in today. I will now be presenting the um, virtual uh, 5,000 meter run. Uh, after that, I've got a dash and I've got to do some updates to the to an amendment to the start list um, for, for that. But uh, again, thanks for tuning in. I'll just go now to our presentation. So yeah, today we interviewed Olympic 200 meter hopeful Zion Corrales Nelson. And now I would like to give a special uh, birthday greeting to one of the legends of Philippine track and field. Um, that is uh, coach Elma Muros Posadas, um, who turns 54, uh, who turns 53, um, who turned 53 on January the 14th. Um, Elma Muros Posadas is um, the most B medaled um, athlete in Philippine track and field history at the Sea Games, having won 14 individual gold medals over a career which spanned over 20 years. Um, she won uh, golds in a variety of events, the 100, the 200, the 100 hurdles, the long jump, and the 400 hurdles, and the heptathlon. Um, she's also one of the youngest, uh, if not the youngest athlete to ever 
attend the SEA Games. She was 14 years old in 1981 when she went to her first SEA Games and won a silver medal in the 4 by 100 meter relay. Um, as of now, there's a rule restriction that athletes under 16 years of age can no longer join the SEA Games. So it's not likely that um, the, the distinction of being the youngest ever um, athlete to join the SEA Games and athletics will be overtaken by anybody in the near future. Um, by the age of 16 at the 1983 SEA Games, Alma was already a Southeast Asian Games champion when she crowned herself the winner in the women's long jump. So we're just giving a warm welcome, uh, a warm birthday greetings uh, to uh, Ms. Alma Muros from Panoi Athletics. Um, best regards to the family and best wishes um, for health and future endeavors. Okay. So yeah, this is my, my motto here. If there is nothing in sports to write about, create something that other people will really want to write about. So it's all about making news and, you know, giving people hope during the difficult, dark uh, COVID times um, by keeping people involved in sport and keeping people from walking out of the sport. So this is a recap of the virtual 60 meter event. So 13 women entered from seven parts of the Philippines. It was the first time in the Philippines to hold a virtual event in the sprints. It was the first time three singlets were given to all participants in any track and field meet in the Philippines. There were two joint winners who both shared the time of 7.75. Um, I was going to play the video, but due to time constraints, um, this video can be viewed on uh, Pinoy Athletics page under our video section. Um, we have two women's uh, videos. I'll just make sure that they've both been posted um, for the women's 60 meter uh, dash the cash event. Uh, there was also prize monies uh, given out to the winner of this event. So there was, since we had two winners, the two winners will receive 50 US dollars. They received a prize from an anonymous sponsor of sports equipment. And they also received two free singlets from um, Massive Sports. And also last but not least, they also received a certificate of participation for the, um, for winning the event. So it was a very interesting event. There were two winners of that event. There was um, national uh, junior record holder of the 100 hurdles, um, Karen Hanario of Leyte, and 2019 Palarong Pambansa um, silver medalist and the one of the 200, Leanne Diana Pama of Masamas Oriental. The competition was so close that there was the unexpected tie between two fine young upcoming athletes who, you know, like, who were just too close to call with this competition. Um, yeah. And the other good thing about this event is it highlighted the importance of the grassroots system in the Philippines. And it showed that you don't just necessarily need a track oval to be involved in athletics as participants during the event running on dirt tracks, rubberized tracks, concrete surfaces, and even uh, there were even people running on cow fields and grass with uh, cows looking in the background. So it was, you know, it was a very diverse event. And definitely we will be announcing our next uh, set of short uh, sprint events um, on the conclusion of our virtual 5,000 meter run, which we will now be discussing. So yeah, so our event was sponsored by Massive Sports and each uh, participant as a um, uh, pilot competition were given uh, three singlets for joining the competition. Um, these excellent uh, high quality singlets are provided by Massive Sports. Check out Massive Sports on Facebook 
they um, provide the singlets to nearly all the UAAP teams and also to the a lot of the national teams in various sports. Uh, the singlets are available for purchase at uh, 700 retailing for 700 Philippine pesos each. Um, yeah. So here's another photo of some the athletes receiving their singlets for joining our event. And yeah, so these were the dual winners of the competition I was mentioning, Karen uh, Hanario and Leanne Deanna Pema. So just filling in now on our updates on our virtual uh, 60 meter event, Hanoi Athletics and Talking Chinoy virtual 5,000 meter run. Uh, second virtual, this is our second virtual event of Hanoi Athletics. And this time we are honored to be um, partnered with uh, Talking Chinoy, a very popular um, YouTube channel uh, ran by Stephen Chet Tan, um, which has some very interesting insights and commentaries on um, Philippine athletics, in particular uh, long distance running, but he also does sprint events and other, other he features other athletes as well. Um, so very interesting. Uh, it's nice to have a very interesting diverse view um, and opinion of, um, of, of the sport we all love. Um, in Philippine athletics. And so, yeah, so with this event, this is our first long distance event. We have around 60 entries. I'm not exactly, you know, like it, it's maybe slightly more or slightly less, but last count, I think we had around 56 or 57 and then some more came in. So I think we have about 60 entries, give or take. Um, but after this, I'll be working on, you know, just editing the, the lists. The entries actually closed last night at 11.59 p.m. Philippine time. So we will not be taking any more entries for this event. Um, it did cost 150 pesos to register. We did get nearly around 60 register, paid registrations in. Um, we did you know, allow quite a lot of time. I think it was more than two weeks. So it was a more than generous entry time period um, for, the, for this event. So there was plenty of time to put Gcash uh, paid registrations in. Um, we did have a hiccup initially with our original GCash account, but now that's all been sorted out. Um, there are several prizes in the event, um, 2,000 for first, 1,500 for second, 1,000 for third, free singlet uh, to the most improved male and the most improved female athlete. We will be uh, counter checking times to make sure that they've been accurate. Uh, like best times have been accurately submitted. Um, we'll also be having a competition, which I will announce shortly, where a free singlet will be awarded to the person who can guess the winning time in the men's and the women's uh, most accurately. And we will be um, also announcing that as well as those prizes, any athlete that is paid and registered and finishes the 5,000 meters in this event, which includes the submission of video and Strava time, will be entitled to 15% discount and free LBC branch pickup delivery of all uh, of a variety of massive sports singlets of their choice. We're also announcing uh, that we will be making a preview of athletes in this event. So a write up media uh, thing is to follow. I'm actually just gonna make some notes here because this gives me like a, a bit more things on my to-do list. So firstly, I need to double check entries and posts. Secondly, I need to uh, do the uh, like competition for most improved and guess the time. And then I need to do a write up on the uh, event participant on the uh, favorite event participants. All right, but the, anyway, we're on schedule. I was actually earmarking until you know two hours for this. So it might be that we're going to finish in under. Um, let me have a look at the time. Well, I'm going to finish in under an hour and a half, probably, maybe just under two hours. 
Okay, so this is a list of all the people who have entered our virtual event. The ones who are in yellow, although Cateus has now updated her details with us. So these are all the entries in our virtual event. So Cateus is now updated. So we are awaiting Strava name information from Rika Kaleko, Alana Halagena, who will be submitting me the information later, and Janet Lumadell, who I just emailed. So all but three of the entries have all submitted their Strava names for the virtual event. So just a brief summary or look at this event. Let's have a look at who we have in the field. So we have at the top uh, with the quickest entry time, Emmeline Tapin, who's a young uh, UAAP athlete, um, obviously in high school. So we don't know too much about her, but um, you know, she did have some very good runs at the weekly relays in the middle distance events, but now seems to be concentrating and moving up to the longer uh, events. We also have in our lineup, Cherry Andron, who is one of the strong uh, female athletes from Cebu, um, you know, who will be challenging there. And joining her is another young um, upcoming Cebu athlete who's only 14 years of age, Asia Parasi. Um, we have Nian Barsena, a former Milo champion, uh, four times, I think four times Milo 21K champion. Um, one of the older, more experienced athletes in the event who will be looking at challenging the younger athletes. We have um, Pawi uh, Wanea, the Sea Games uh, mixed uh, relays duathlon bronze medalist in, in, the, in the lineup. Um, we also have um, some of our, you know, more experienced athletes like Lanny uh, Cardona and April Rose Diaz, who are regular participants on the on the road circuit. Um, also, looking down at that list, we have Erica uh, Ruto. It should be Erica, not Eric. Um, you know, who's a Palaron from Bansa finalist in sprints, who's just doing this uh, event for some. You know, for some uh, for some fitness, um, as well as athletes from other events, we also have Alana Halagena, the niece of Coach uh, Coach Titus Satino, Satino Salazar, the uh, top junior uh, women's walkathon athlete, and also joining us, um, I should really give a good mention to here is Leslie Delima, who is the Palong Pambanta champion in the 1500 meters and the 3000 meters in the secondary girls. Um, you know, uh, yeah, so there's like a very, um, a very competitive field with athletes from a wide range of events joining us. We have a uh, do athlete, we have a sprinter, we have a walkathon in, in, in this event. So it, it's a very wide variety of athletes. Uh, of all different ages as well in, in the uh, participating in the event. So the oldest athlete here is um, 33 and the youngest is 13. So it, it's a wide variety of, uh, sorry, 40, 43 and 13. So it's a wide variety of age um, uh, distribution as well for our event. Looking at the events, we are very well represented by Roel, Coach Roel Anno's team of BBG Run, which has contributed, um, like, I would say at least a third of the athlete of the women's events. Also, Valencia Running Club, Pinoy Athletics, Team Titus has three athletes entered here. Uh, Neo Runners, Imus Rican. Canada team, Calapan City, General Santos, Daz Marinas, Barcenas, Running Warriors, and Spectrum Runners are also, and Lucky Lucky City are also joining the meet. Now, moving on to the men, which doesn't even now fit on one page. We have 37 entries in the men, but we have one scratching due to uh, feeling unwell. So we have 36 starters now in the men's um, in the men's 5,000 meter run. Um, so 30, 36 starters now. So looking at the men's event, um, I actually did get the um, 
Strava names from Contapa, but several BBG runners and a couple of others we still need to get the, uh, the Strava names from. We have, I have updated some of this information it just came in during my interview with Liam Nelson, so I will be updating that after this. Um, yeah, so with um, this event, I would like to firstly say that we're very um, grateful and honoured that Coach Roel Anno team of BBG Run has contributed about half the athletes in this uh, men's event. So we're really grateful for the support from Coach Royal Anno and we just like to also mention that uh, Davao in March, uh, Coach, Royal, Coach Royal Anno will be organising a Davao International Marathon, which is another virtual event which has attracted a lot of entries. And, you know, like we're going to be supporting his event as he's been great support to ours, we're going to help support his event and get athletes to there. That event, the Davao International Marathon has a 5, a 10K, a 21K and a marathon. So anyone who wants to sign up to the BBG, oh no, sorry, not the Davao International Marathon, can coach, uh, can contact coach Roel Anno, either message him or message uh, the BBG Run Philippines group. Um, because they're going to be organising some exciting virtual events. Uh, Coach Ro Alano organised the 10K BBG Run event, uh, which was run won by our friend Steve Brazza in a brilliant time of 32.01, um, you know, which was a very successful event. And a lot of those athletes who joined that event are now following up their season with another run at this event. Now, the preview of our top athletes in this event and the variety of athletes we have in the event are as follows. Uh, top entry with a time of 15.25 is Darwin Lim, a former UAAP 10,000 metre champion. Um, you know, now he's been around, uh, now 32 years, now 32 years of age, coached by legendary late great Rosito and Dyer at at Far Eastern University and also a teammate of the late great Raphael Poly Kitt. Um, you know, so he, he comes from a good group of uh, of uh, FEU athletes um, and he, he is the top entry for our event. Now challenging him will be Prince Joey Lee, Cebu's Prince, um, the who um, who is an athlete slash coach who um, will be representing Spectrum Runners from Cebu City. Um, Joey Lee has a uh, best time of 15.33. Also challenging here will be Elbrin Neri, um, the UAAP 800 and 1500 metre record holder and also a former national and Philippine National Games champion in the 800 uh, metres who represented the Philippines in the 1500 metres and finished seventh at the 2017 Sea Games in Kuala Lumpur. So Neri uh, moving, having a go with a longer event to challenge the 5000 metre specialists here. Edward Flores, who finished fourth in the BBG run, um, is the quickest entry from the BBG runners who will also be aiming for a podium finish here. And also, um, our friend Saint Brazza, the 1500, uh, three, 1500 meter um, and 5000 meter champion of the Palarong Pambansa, representing Ilo Ilo. He was the um, winner the other week of the Team BBG of the BBG Run Philippines. Uh, 10,000 metres and clocked a time of 32.01, a new personal best uh, by about a minute. We also have, we're rounding up a list of six athletes who are starting, who have ran under 16 minutes. Relfred S. Porma from ARM Team Haya. Um, now looking further down the list at other prominent athletes we have entered in the event. We also have Jerry Vasquez, a Palaro steeplechase champion in high school boys, representing Kintafa. Um, scrolling down further, um, we, we represent 
the teams that we're represented by here are BBG Run, who obviously have contributed the most athletes, Kentafa, Pinoy Athletics, Maravellas, uh, Mata'an Runners, JRU, Ilo Ilo, Arm, Team Haya, Spectrum Runners. And I'll move on to the next page. So these are our last set of entries here. Our registrant, Jarek Quintanino, is having a go even at this event. He just wants to run a new PB. Um, we, as I mentioned before, Florenio Lapis has withdrawn from the event due to um, not being well. So we now have 36, not 37 starters for our event. And that's it. I'll just close that up. So I'm just going to quickly answer questions and do a quick shout out to anyone else who has joined and watched in our presentation. Um, and then I'll be getting back to the um, other tasks that I still have this morning to complete for the morning before lunchtime um, with regards to our events management. I'm just going to just talk to all these. Okay, so a special shout out to Jasava Tej, John Castiglione, and Napier Sikitano for joining in. And I now have some questions. It hasn't started yet. I'm not sure what they mean. I'll ask later. We should be producing a new generation of Lydia de Vega and Marius Perez and Grasser program this time. Well, I'm just going to say in regards to that, we're not the Athletics Association or the PSC, so we can only do our bit um, in terms of virtual events and helping athletes. Um, the, with uh, with development of the sport. The grassroots is really up to the National Association and the PSC to, to fix. On our part, you know, just because we love the sport, we just um, want to do what we can with rather limited resources that sometimes have to be stretched in order to, um, you know, do what we can to uplift the sport, especially during the COVID time when morale is at its all time low with with uncertainties, with events and that sort of thing. We need to, you know, keep athletes, you know, from walking out of the sport. So, you know, we'll just, we can only do our small bit as, uh, you know, we obviously have very limited resources to that are stretched and, you know, connections in order to get things done. So, uh, you know, but hopefully the people at the top are listening and they can, you know, implement the grassroots. That's, that's all I say in regards to, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Jasava Tedge's message that it's really up to, you know, the people at the top to motivate the people at the bottom to, you know, lead to lead in a direction which you know is beneficial for everybody in the sport. Okay, is there any further questions? I hope that answered your question, Jasava. When it comes to uh, grassroots, in particular, grassroots athletics in the Philippines. Okay, I'll just check if we have any more questions and then I'll get on to my, on to my uh, um, um, event management. All right, so that's now one hour and 40 minutes on the clock. I think that's uh, quite enough for this morning's uh, broadcast. And um, I'd like again to thank everybody for tuning in and our special guests. And again, this is another message I'm sending out um, to Filipino uh, track and field athletes is that, you know, if anybody would like to interview on our show, the door is wide open. I mean, we're not being preferential to, um, you know, fill foreign athletes only. We, we would love to hear from some local athletes about how things are going and, you know, what their thoughts are. So the door is wide open. The invitation is there for any athletes that would like to feature on our on our show. We have sent out invitations. Um, not everybody 
would like to be on our show, which is which I can deeply respect. Um, but you know, if anybody would like to come on board and you know just go out and talk to the people, um, then they're more than welcome. And as I said, the door is always open to them. Anyway, thank you very much, everybody, for joining in today. And um, I would like to wish everybody a very happy Saturday. Stay safe, wear a mask. And um, to all the participants in our virtual 5,000 meters and virtual races, I would like to wish them all the best of luck. Adhere to the COVID protocols in your areas. Make sure you wear masks if, if required. And um, uh, we hope to see some good, uh, interesting results. And we look forward to your updates. Thank you, everybody. Um, this is uh, Andrew Curry from Australia signing off.